Hey, what's up, guys? It's Eli Fishman from Talking Ball, Dinet, and YouTube. Eli Fishman Sports back with another interview today. I'm happy to be joined by former MLB pitcher Peter Harnish. Peter, thanks for joining me. Oh, I love it, man. We were wrapping out for a little bit. We're having fun now. What do you got? <laughs> All right. So you pitched at Fordham University. You were had a lifetime 21 and three NCAA record, 2.29 ERA, 313 Ks. You were one of the be best pitchers in the university's history. Can you tell me about your experience that, down there at Fordham? It was great. I had great coaches. I really did. I had a, my my pitching coach in college was had played in the big leagues with the Mets and Yankees. His name was Mike Brewer. And uh, he helped me so much uh, to go from being a, a quality high school pitcher to being a really good college pitcher. He really, he was great. And then the head coach was Dan Gallagher, and he was a little bit of a, he was a hard man. He was a hard man to play for, but he got the best out of it. He pushed us, and uh, those guys pushed me, and, and I owe a lot to them. So uh, after you were drafted um, in the 1987 draft, you were 1988 September call-up, um, and you made your MLB debut. Uh, what was it like to get that call as a September call-up that you were going to the show? It was awesome, man. It was uh, Fenway Park, and I grew up a Yankee fan on Long Island, so being in Fenway Park, you know, I wasn't a Red Sox. I wasn't big on the Red Sox, but uh, I tell you, that was a special night. I'll never forget it. I gave a grand slam in the third inning, which wasn't so cool, you know? Jim Rice, you remember Jim Rice? He's a Hall of Famer. You know who Jim Rice is, right? Well, he had, uh, he had a grand slam off me in the third inning, so I had to live it. But that's all I gave up, though. I pitched seven innings. I gave it then the four runs. We lost four to three. Uh, I had so many great friends from Fordham come up for it. They all drove up to support me. It was just, it was really great. It was in, awesome. In 1990, you were traded to Houston as part of a pretty big deal. Um, you were with Kurt, Sch one of the guys was Kurt Schilling um, to, and Steve Finley uh, for Glenn Davis. To beat the, you, you've only played one year in the bigs. You've only played two, you haven't even played two full years in pro ball. And you're part of this blockbuster trade and you're going to Houston. What was it like to get that call? What was going through your, what was going through your mind when you got that call that you were going to Houston? Well, that actually turns out to be one of the worst trades in the history of major <laughs> leagues. And when they do that show on ML, be network every year about the 10 worst trades it's always one of them um, at the time the Orioles thought they just needed one more power right-handed bat and Glenn Davis was like a 38 to 40 home run guy so they thought they were making a trade but they wound up trading you know Kurt Schilling borderline Hall of Famer I don't know if he ever gets in um, I had a quality long career as a major league and Steve Finley had a really good long career too so three quality big leaguers for one guy who really didn't do much after that so it's it's definitely goes down as a, a bad trade on uh on Houston's part. Uh, that next season after you were traded, you did really well. In the first half of the season, you had a 2.22 ERA, which eventually led you to be voted in to the MLB All-Star Game. In 1991, you got to participate in that you know, MLB All-Star Game, that whole experience. Can you tell me about that? Uh, yeah, no, it was, it was awesome. Funny thing about that, funny thing about being in the All-Star Game that year is that I was 5-7 and seven at the All-Star break. And you don't find too many starting pitchers with a five, you know, five wins, seven losses. Not a, not a great record, but my ERA was was pretty low, and I had pitched really well. I just was in a, some tough one one nothing nothing games. A lot of tough low scoring games. Um, it was it was an honor, man, to to be in the major leagues and be a, in the same clubhouse as some of those guys. And we all have to sign a bunch of balls and bats. You know, as all stars, and it was just a real thrill for me. And it was in Toronto, and uh, it was really really cool. I really enjoyed. It. I got the pitching inning, so that was great. So. Uh You've since you played so many years in the bigs, as you said, you played in the All Star game. You had some amazing experiences. You were a starting pitcher for many years. Who was the hardest player you faced in the major league? Oh, I faced a lot of tough guys. Tony Gwynn, the late Tony Gwynn, was was unbelievable. Really tough for me. Uh, Barry Bonds was really tough. Um, Wade Boggs in the American League. I mean, there were so many great hitters. Ozzy Smith, who wasn't really, he was known as a defensive guy. You know who Ozzy Smith yeah. is, of course. I don't know, he probably had 12 or 14 gold gloves or whatever, and he probably the best def defender I've ever seen on a baseball field. He wasn't much with the bat, but he wore me out too. So Ozzie, he, we had our battles, you know. So it was weird. There were some guys who you'd expect, like Barry Bonds is, to me, in my opinion, the best player I ever saw and still have ever seen. But, um, yeah, I faced a lot of great hitters. It was quite an honor to do battle with those guys and, and just see how you fight it out. And I won some of the match. I won some of the battles, and they won some, you know, but... That's what happens when you face the guy, the best players in the world. 
the 1992, after that nice 1991 All-Star season, you were named the opening day starter. That's a pretty big deal in the MLB out of only 30 teams to be named that number one guy for the Houston Astros. When your manager gave you the nod that you're going to be the opening day starter, how did that feel to be going out on opening day? It's great. Art Howe was the manager, um, and, and Artie and I got along great, and he was, a, he was a great man. He mentored me and helped me a lot in my career when I was as a young player, but... Um, I think I started opening day three or four times, and it's, it's special every year. I mean, it's it's an early game, and it doesn't mean as much as games in September. You know, there's a lot of pressure on games in September, but there's always, no matter what team, no matter what expectations are, everybody's 0-0, so everybody's got a chance to win on opening day. And um, it's it's really, really special, um, the, the, the ceremony of it all, the pomp, the circumstance, the excitement. It's always a full stadium, and... Uh, it's it's a really it's a special thing to to pitch on opening day. All right, thank you so much for joining me, Peter.